Hello again. Um, different video again. Again, this is not one of our videos uh, about sailing around the world. We get a lot of questions asked about how I started sailing and how I got from uh, doing a nine to five job in central London to sailing off around the world. And there's a lot of questions that we get asked about how this process goes, how what steps are on the way. So I thought, or we thought, um, I'd show you how I started off. And maybe I'll answer some of your questions. Maybe it'll give you some inspiration. So let's uh, let's see where we go. This is uh, Greenwich in South London. You can see in the background there is uh, the Cutty site, which is and was a tea clipper that they restored. It's now a museum, and it was the fastest tea clipper uh, to do the trip from India to England, thus fetching the best price for tea. So growing up here next to the Thames and next to the Meridian Line and next to the Cutty Sark and the Royal Naval Museum, my parents, my mother being a teacher, dragged us to museums most every weekend. And so my childhood was filled with the river, the museums, the tunnels, and uh, as you can see behind you, the city of London and the River Thames. And um, I guess this is where it started. Although, it took me until I was in my early 30s to get a boat. So there's obviously a big gap in between. So um, this is it, where it all started. The other thing about a child growing up in Greenwich was that when I was small, Che Blythe's Gypsy Moth was also in dry dock here. And so the little catch that circumnavigated the world was available for me to see and to look and wander over. So there was a lot of maritime history here. There is, it is kind of like, the home of maritime history really in the UK so there was a lot for me to look and learn and, and see and uh, yeah this is where I spent my youth the next big thing for me really was coming here this is the island of Rhodes uh, part of the Dodecanese island chain now <clears throat> I was lucky enough that my parents had a holiday home here and so I'd spend a lot of my summers here just sitting on the dock walls looking at all these boats coming in and out and it just seemed like such a such a fantastic lifestyle choice it seemed to be a form of escapism which was the perfect antidote to the life that I had in London working some fairly ungodly hours and we find that when we talk to people at meetups, when we talk to people on the internet, when we meet people that know us or people that know us through our YouTube channel, we find that so many people want to do this and there are hurdles, barriers to, to get through, to get you across the line, to get you to the point of which you can buy a boat and set sail. And for most people, the biggest hurdle is actually not having a boat or not having the inspiration to get a boat and this for us or this for me was my inspiration behind me there are yachts motor yachts sailing yachts from all over the world and it sparked something in me to try and aim for something different now it's obvious from the backdrop and from what you can see that this is a far nicer climate than, than where I came from, which was South London. So the other thing that was a massive inspiration to me was the thought of getting to a point where I could sail away and go somewhere where it was hot all the time, or where I didn't have to wear shoes, where I could bum around in a pair of shorts rather than wearing a shirt and tie to work. And it is you need an inspiration. You need a form of inspiration to get you over the line. So, about 12 years ago now, I decided that I needed to go and buy a boat. And I did. I went and bought a boat that uh, wasn't going to bankrupt me. So, this is how it all started really. I decided I wanted to buy a boat, but then wasn't sure if I was gonna still want to sail after a year or so. 
as you can see from some of the boats behind me I found a boat that I could afford and found a boat I could afford to sink and not bankrupt myself kind of the thoughts behind this are if I don't get on with it and I sell it on I've spent six seven thousand on a boat so you find a lot of people look to buy their first boat kind of sub 25 foot 25 foot is small enough for you to handle small enough for you to learn the ropes metaphorically and literally and if you can apply those skills to a small boat moving to a larger boat is uh, fairly straightforward you just have a bigger process and a bigger set of engines to deal with and a bigger set of sails to deal with so my first boat was 25 foot it was cost me not a lot of money and it came from this beautiful yard here and so this is where I learned to sail and this is the thing you'll find in just about every boat yard you go into except for obviously the posh ones full of big yachts there's lots of small trailer sailors lots of old boats and 30 40 years ago lots of unloved projects that have fallen by the wayside and like this boat here lots of projects where you can see that the owner clearly loves the boat has done a lot of work on her or but yet doesn't get the time to sail anymore so i bought my first boat and then spent every weekend learning about boats and when I say learning about boats, I don't mean sailing. I went to sail, I started sailing, I learned how to use the engine, turn it on, turn it off. Craft is about a hundred other things, how to get an engine started, how to get an engine started when it stops, how to look after fuel lines, engine oil, how to repair sails, look at woodwork, look at fiberglass. You end up becoming a kind of craftsman in many disciplines. And I think that I, I found that really enjoying. I found being handy very different from the life I had as a professional in London. So it was hugely rewarding to be able to do this, these sort of things, to kind of do labor and woodwork during my weekends. And I loved that boat. And you know, when the weather was permitted, I took the boat sailing, I went sailing in her. I learned to sail. The boat was an absolute dog. She sailed like a dog. She really did. I could have just strapped a couple of sheets to a to a concrete block and probably got better sailing performance but I learned to sail that way I suppose the thing about people who live in cities especially big cities they will probably tell you and I found this to be true that you live a faceless existence in cities people don't recognize you people don't really know you there's no sense of community at all it's just one of the downsides of living in big cities and for me, the thing that really drew me into sailing more than the wind in the sails or, you know, these scintillating kind of speeding across still water was just finding a set of people who just brought me into their community. I think one thing that is a unifying constant wherever we've sailed, and we've sailed half the globe now, is that sailing communities are tight. They are tight and welcoming. And I think without exception, you find much closer friendships, or we found much closer friendships through our sailing friends than I have ever done outside of that circle. And so to kind of be on this beautiful sleepy stretch of water, which is, as you can probably see, is as far from the hubbub of London life as you could probably get, I then found a set of friends who were ridiculously welcoming, didn't care what I did outside of my sailing were welcoming supportive happy to help happy to give advice sometimes too much advice probably and I fell in love with it I fell in love with it as a sport not for the actual sport of it but because of the people that were around it and I think that's what keeps people in sailing. I know lots of people, especially in this marina that I kept my boat in, or we kept our boat in. There are sailors there that probably hadn't sailed properly in a decade, but they were still sailors, and there were old sailors, and they were treated with the respect that being old sailors gives them. And they didn't want to walk away from their boats, despite the fact that they knew, and everyone knew, the boat was never going to leave the marina again. And they knew that because they stayed because they wanted the sense of community 
Now we get asked a lot, especially on the YouTube live, how did you get into sailing? How did you get into sailing? And I kind of think I'm giving you a brief overview, but there's a lot of questions on, hang on, do I need qualifications? What, how do I get qualified? And I think that's probably needs to be quantified as well. Joining a community of sailboat enthusiasts and owning a boat is one thing, but you really do at some point have to learn to sail. Now, when I started, things like YouTube, which was in its infancy at the time, they, there was, I could look at sailing videos on there. I had books and I did a dinghy sailing course. It was a two day course run by the RYA, which is the British Yachting Association, the Royal Yachting Association. <clears throat> the Americans have got, uh, I think it's the ASA, the American Sailing Association. And you can do simple courses, simple courses to the first ones to understand how sailboats work you know, how to turn a sail into the wind. And then there are other courses which allow you to be crew on a boat, to kind of be on a boat and not be a risk either to yourself or to the people around you. And because I was in this community and because everyone was helpful, because everyone owned boats, I found that once they knew that I knew nothing and that they, you know, that there was no mocking about that. But after I'd been there a couple of months, people would say to me, do you want to come sailing for the day? Do you want to come sailing for the weekend? And there was no faster way for me to learn sailing than to go out with old sailors. And so every weekend I'd go out and someone would say, let's go sailing. And I'd go out and I'd learn. I'd learn how to use a different boat. I'd learn how to tie up on a different pontoon in a different marina. And because it was all done in the spirit of fun and friendship, and because it was all done, you know, with a tongue in cheek, kind of jovial attitude and there was always a couple of pints at the end of it I just thought well this is fantastic this is the life I want to lead and so what I would say to people who want to get into sailing and I think it falls broadly into two camps there are those people that have never sailed like myself or there are those people that used to sail when they were younger and then for whatever reason kids family other commitments it fell off the list so what I would say, I, I know that every approach is different and some people will go out. We've met a couple whose first boat was a 70 or 80 foot motor cruiser. And while I had nothing but admiration for them, it's not how I would have done it. I think there's no faster or better way of putting yourself off something, whether it's riding a horse, sailing a boat, than scaring yourself badly. And I think that what I was privileged enough to find was that I was accepted into a community where I always felt safe uh, amongst my elders. These people were say had been sailing for 30, 40 years, more in some cases, and they knew to try and keep me safe. It was just, it was a really, you know, a very safe environment. And so I grew confident, or more confident in my abilities, by just having people mentor me. So my advice is to, if you're gonna do something, you know, we hear a lot of people on YouTube saying, I, in three or four more years, I'm gonna buy a boat and sail off. I generally would say to you, don't wait three or four more years, consider buying a smaller, much cheaper boat now in a yard where you're gonna meet people and meet people and learn how to look after your boat, learn how boat maintenance, go and experience sailing, meet new friends because it's worth it. It's one of my, you know, happiest things that I've done in my life was buy a boat and keep it down here. And one thing that makes me homesick, probably more than my family, is missing the people down here. These people I've known for a decade and they look after me. It's, it's, just, it's a fantastic community. So genuinely the take home message I would give to you all is that if you have the financial clout, the financial acumen to buy a boat in a few years time and you're saving up for some magnificent yacht and you've never sailed or you haven't sailed for years try buying a smaller yacht you know i'm suggesting something six seven thousand pounds maybe ten thousand dollars as a ceiling something that you can day sail weekend sail with your wife your partner your kids and just go and enjoy yourself because you're missing a huge chunk in the process obviously not everyone can do that but I, I wouldn't this is just my, my opinion I wouldn't go straight to buying a big yacht and sailing off I'd enjoy the baby steps because the baby steps are some of my happiest memories and you'll learn a lot 
you know, when I first, when I bought my first boat, I did all the research on the internet. I knew what I could afford or what I was willing to spend with my budget, which was tiny. And I picked a boat and I bought it and it wasn't the best boat in the world. In fact, it wasn't, probably wasn't far off one of the worst boats in the world. But I also learned through being in the marina about hundreds of other little boats, hundreds of other boat types and keel configurations and sail plans and sail types and rigging types and tillers versus wheels, which these things, you can read about them, but until you've actually seen them, until you've actually experienced them, it's impossible to pass judgment on them and to make an informed decision. So to me, informed decisions come from experience. And if you can get experience through people and friends, then your decisions will be better. And I think it's worth it. On a final note about boat buying, and my kind of thoughts on maybe keep buying a smaller boat in the marina. My best friend John has worked in the marina for probably 30 years. And what he says, and what he has managed to do is buy up all sorts of boats at crazy knockdown prices because he's got his ear to the ground and people know him. And so I would say that really if you are able to spend time in a marina, not just as a guest, but as someone that actually lives there, you will find a lot more people will be coming through and selling boats. You'll work out what's a good buy, what's not a good buy. And I suppose in a way, it will reduce the risk of buying a dud, buying a lemon, and hopefully make your sailing worthwhile. You'll also, if you get to a year or two years down the line, realize that it's not for you and it's not for everyone. This is why there are so many abandoned and neglected boats in our boatyard. If you find it's not for you, you can sell the boat and if you lose 10% of it, you've lost $1,000 if you spent 10 grand. So in the grand scheme of boat ownership, that's not a lot. It's better than investing, you know, a hundred or more thousand dollars and still losing 10%. So these are my thoughts on what you should do it's not for everyone. I would suggest that people have got time. They do it this way. And really to finish, lastly, I would say that the, the happiest I've ever seen people on yachts are those with the smallest yachts. Uh, and I think that's across the board. Our friends, we all fall into a group of people whose yachts are probably 40-ish foot. 40 foot they've scraped together they're not sometimes in the best condition but these people are so happy because they haven't spent everything or stuff they couldn't afford on a crazy big yacht they haven't worked themselves into a bitter state of existence so they could buy a big yacht so just consider it i imagine that we may get a hell of a lot of grief or actually i may get a hell of a lot of grief on this and see let me know what you think Anyway, thanks for watching. Teresa is out with her friends in London. I'm with my friends in Kent. And we'll be back with our usual videos. Take care.